interview with Vitaly, take one. So it's Ogorodnikov, sorry. Ogorodnikov. Yeah, so remember Ogorod, and Ogorod. then you add just Nikov, Ogorodnikov. Ogorodnikov. Today, we have missionary Vitaly Ogorodnikov. Ogorodnikov. Today, on Modern Faith Unlimited, missionary Vitaly Ogorodnikov. <laughs> it's, okay. it's good enough, man. Nobody will not okay. say anything. Okay. Enough. Today on Modern Faith Unlimited, missionary Vitaly Ogrodnikov, Russian missionary Vitaly Ogrodnikov. Ogrodnikov. I do know my friend's name. Uh, today on Modern Faith Unlimited, missionary Vitaly Ogrodnikov is going to tell us his life story. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Modern Faith Unlimited. I'm William Henley, and if you notice, William Quinn is not here today. We have my good th friend Vitaly uh, with us today, and Vitaly is from Russia. He's a missionary there. I guess just first thing about you being from Russia, you obviously grew up in uh, the era of the Soviet Union. If you could tell us a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, well, thank you so much for uh allowing me to come. I'm glad to be on the show. Um, I would like just to share a little bit how, you know, about my life and how it was back there. Uh, yeah, I was born uh, in the 1980s, so it was just right before the communism collapsed. And it was a time of, you know, long lines and people were, uh, you know, uh, looking for things and they had to find certain things and you always had to buy things you don't need to exchange them. So as a child, as growing up, I really thought we live in the best country in the world. And so I don't have like any like dramatic or negative memories. I remember having my friends and spending a lot of time outside playing, uh, you know, with them. Although I didn't have toys, I remember just a couple of toys that I had. And that was just good enough. I was happy having just a few toys. I didn't need more than that, but it was an interesting time. Um, yeah, and uh, my parents were very respectful people. My father was a dentist and my mother was a pharmacist. So uh, we we were like a middle class, um, if you can say so. And so we were not really starving of hunger or anything like that, but uh, it wasn't like everybody sort of were equal at that time. So we were like any other family in the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So just to tag on to this, we've here in the U.S. have heard stories about the bread lines and people lining up to get for hours to get bread and um, socks and stuff like that. Um, was that true? Uh, did stuff like that really happen? Yeah, people were really standing in lines when you will go to the store. They're like almost nothing you could buy. It's always well, like the times you had to mark when they bring stuff and you would stand in line knowing the time when they bring like socks or uh, maybe books or maybe clothes, whatever it is. Uh, so people will sort of uh, come at that moment when they bring because next day uh, things would be, you know, there would be a complete sale and nobody will buy anything. So there was a... Uh, interesting time of history where the government sort of decided how many things people need and what they need, not not the market. So that was a, like a terrible uh, time for my parents. But as a kid, I don't remember so much about uh, having uh, needs and something. Parents somehow were able to manage and they they made met, met my needs. So. Earlier, you mentioned about trading. So I guess you would go and you would pick up whatever you needed and then uh, trade it later. Yeah. So you would usually at those times, people would uh, stay, uh, stand in line and they will ask other guys, like, what are they giving us? Because it was, it was like not that you are buying, but more like what they decided to sell you. Uh, and so 
if you don't need, say, a hat, but you would still go and buy a hat and instead stay in a line to buy a hat to trade it later for things you need because you don't know if you need a jacket tomorrow and somebody has an extra jacket and needs a hat and always like a sort of like an exchange system where you exchange things, you change goods, goods for another goods. Mm -hmm. So what are your memories about the Soviet Union falling? Um, um, I guess, uh, I guess it was kind of gradual. Um, uh, there was uh, Gorbachev kind of paved the way. And um, so what are your memories of this? Yeah, I was a small boy when it all happened. I was about 11 years old in 1991. I remember there was sort of like a, a revolution on the square. There people were protesting and there were tanks and there were people were throwing stuff at the police and at the government officials. It was like a big thing that especially that, you know, aired it in Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg, people were really coming together and sort of fighting for freedom. Uh, just after the communism collapsed, I remember how poor people were and how hard it was to, uh, you know, uh, reset the country because it was a, a one system and it changed to a new system and people didn't know how to run this country. Nobody knew, nobody knew how to do business. Uh, banks were not really working because there was just one state bank. And so there was just a hard time figuring out the demand and, um, you know, what people really need and what, and the factories were shut down. So many people would work without getting paid for three months. And I remember wow. my mom worked for like a state hospital and she wasn't paid for three months. Wow. And at that stage, you know, I, uh, uh, my father also died just before that happened and we were sort of a middle-class family and all of a sudden we became a poor family mm -hmm. because my mom was couldn't provide for us and she was working hard but nobody was willing to pay her the salary eventually she uh, you know left the job and start working for a private company and they also didn't pay her like maybe for two months and then they pay her for the third month and so it always was like a struggle for our family just to survive it was like a matter especially in the early 90s it was the matter of how do we survive this year what do we do just to have something to eat i remember we ate a lot of chinese noodles so that was kind of like a story in it of itself but that was yeah. a, sort of a, a times where people were really trying to survive and that was just the hardest time mm -hmm. so I guess, tell me a little bit about your family and stuff like you, you mentioned what they did, but um, I guess kind of your family dynamics um, or your family um, Christians, uh, anything yeah. like that? Uh, well, my, my family was not a Christian. My father and mother were both atheists. So I grew up in that environment of never, I never heard about Jesus. I never heard about God. I never heard about um, just the church. Uh, so, so that was uh, an interesting uh, path where I uh, saw some churches like in the 90s, like some Orthodox churches, but I thought it's more kind of like a club, like a Christian club where people just sort of, they, they like this idea of uh, believing in God and they just uh, imagine God and they just worship Him. I didn't think much of although, and I was just trying to live my life. Uh, I had a brother who's five years younger than me. And so, so we were just, you know, growing as a typical Soviet family and going to a summer house and planting veggies and berries and mm -hmm. just keeping it up. Um, and um, when I was 13 years old, my father had a heart attack and he died in about one hour. Uh, so it was a, like a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm and it was just too late for the ambulance to come. The ambulance was trying to save him, but it was just too late. Mm. And uh, so uh, my uh, we were a good family, but all of a sudden my mom became a single mom with two kids trying to bring them up. And it was a challenge for her to do it because it was a difficult time, as I said, but also I was a very difficult kid to raise. <laughs> right, right. So, um... I guess here we heard that the church was, 
you know, completely illegal in um, the Soviet Union. Um, what about the Orthodox Church? Was it still operating uh, during the Soviet Union? Uh, yeah, it was sort of an, an underground church. It wasn't um, really maybe 100% uh, shut down, but it was a uh, sort of not everywhere like it is now, like in every village. It was, they had like maybe one temple in the whole city for just the older people. So they would sort of say, this is just for the old folks. It's not for the young, it's not for the youth. So it did exist, but nobody was really uh, going there. And obviously there was an evangelical church that was really underground and they would gather at home, homes or apartments or sometimes in the parks, depending on the, you know, the weather and just the, you know, situation in that current place where they were gathering. Hey, Editor Will here. Hey, so we filmed for about 35 minutes on this day. And I know just looking at the YouTube viewer retentions, most people tend to drop out after six to seven minutes. So I'm actually going to try splitting this into a, a about three different parts and see how it goes. So um, look for part two coming soon. Bye-bye.